Hey, what's up? It's Daniel from TheMetalSchool.com and today uh, we're going to go over the different ways you can cut a piece of inch and a half square tubing. There's a million different ways to do it. We're going to go over a handful of those today, so let's check it out. Alright, so the first way that we're going to go over cutting this piece of tubing is we're going to use a plasma torch and uh, this is, it's going to make a nice clean cut, but the problem that you're going to have with plasma cutting tubing, it's going to be real hard to cut a square one. Um, so I've got this laid out with soapstone. Um, let's cut it up, see how it looks. I'm going to use this little angle here just to lean that up again so I have some way to try to hold that square. Get it lined up, see how it goes. All right, so we got that first piece cut with the plasma. As you can see, uh, it's fairly square. We could probably stand to have done a little bit better job, but uh, plasma cuts pretty clean, especially for a thermal cut process. But as you can tell, if we were going to be well nut onto anything, we'd obviously have to do some grinding work to clean up the rough edges and make it square. So let's look at some of the other ways that we can do this. All right, the next process that we're gonna use is a cold saw. And a cold saw is great for very highly uh, accurate cuts that you need. Um, works much like a chop saw, but they call it a cold saw because this blade is gonna spin really slow and it's basically gonna machine that cut. Um, it's got a cover that'll come down over the blade here for safety. Um, and you can set your degrees exactly where you want them. Uh, it's gonna make a real fast cut and it's also gonna be a very accurate cut. So let's see how it looks. All right, so one of the things about a cold saw is that you have to have the correct blade for the type of material you're cutting. Um, so we got thin wall tubing here. We got a blade with a lot of teeth. So um, we're going to set this for zero degrees, lock it in, and make our cut. Alright, so you'll notice right away when we were making that cut that the cold saw uses a coolant to cool the blade. So you're going to have to obviously wipe that off, if, especially when you're welding something. Uh, every once in a while you end up with a little burr on it like this. Um, sometimes they can just be broken off with a pair of pliers like this. Um, it usually means the blade's about getting dull. Might need sharpened. But as you can tell, it's a very clean cut, a lot, of, a lot of accuracy with a cold saw. And the nice thing about a cold saw is you can cut really precise angles with it. Alright, so obviously one of the major drawbacks of a cold saw is that they're really expensive. Um, something that's much more affordable for like a home shop type is uh, an abrasive chop saw like this, which is basically going to grind this piece in half. You're going to give up a lot of accuracy using one of these, but it makes a pretty fairly quick cut and uh, it's inexpensive. So let's have a look, see how it does. Also, another thing about these saws is that they're really loud, so you obviously need to wear uh, hearing protection when you're using them. Alright, as you can see, it makes a fairly good cut. Um, you're going to get a lot of these burrs on the end. Another thing about the chop saw like this is the part's going to get really hot. 
So unlike the cold saw, which is also used as a coolant, you're not going to have any heat on the piece. Uh, this is going to get it pretty darn hot, as you can see by the bluing on the bottom of it. But it's inexpensive, and you can make some cuts pretty quick, quick with it. So it's good for a home shop. All right, so somewhere between a uh, cold saw and an abrasive chop saw, in terms of accuracy, you're probably going to have a bandsaw like this. Uh, this is a horizontal bandsaw. It's got an automatic feed on it. Um, I really like the, the band saws because you can put a piece in it and essentially walk away just make sure you're not having a problem but um, it makes pretty accurate cuts you'll find that when your blade starts to wear on a band saw you, the accuracy is going to diminish really fast but um, it, it cuts slow but like I said you don't have to stand there and watch it you can just keep an eye on it from the other side of the shop as you're doing something else so let's have a cut and we'll see how it does. So here's the results of the bandsaw. As you can see, you get a pretty nice edge uh, cut here. Um, you, you might end up with a really small lip that you might have to grind. Uh, as you can tell, pretty square cut. Uh, might have been off a little bit. That blade's getting kind of old. And also, bandsaws are inherently not that accurate. Um, so you're not going to end up with a perfectly square cut all the time. And when you go to adjust them, it, sometimes it can be a little finicky. but all in all, they're a real nice saw. Alright, so now kind of the cheapest way that you can cut, or one of the cheaper ways that you can cut, is with a cutting disc. Um, some people call them a wafer wheel. they got probably a handful of different names. I'm um, using that with just a regular 4 inch grinder. Um, so, kind of the important things to remember when you're doing this. Most grinders are going to have like a base nut here that's going to shorten up those threads. And then you'll put the disc, you'll make sure that's centered on that. Um, and then another thing is that almost all these nuts are going to say something to the effect of um, when using eighth inch wheels, put this side down because uh, if you don't, this wheel is going to rattle around loose. So make sure when you're using cutting discs like this, you got the nut going the right direction. So we'll go ahead and get that on. And then also, I've seen these things uh, fly apart. It's not that uncommon for these things to disintegrate if you get out of square within the joint. I know a lot of people like to take the guards off, but I highly recommend that if you're using cutting discs like this, leave your guard on, wear face protection, wear gloves. Uh, if it's loud, wear something to protect your ears. So safety is definitely paramount when you're using this. All right, so we uh, had to lay out our mark here with a soapstone, laid it out all the way around. And because this is going to need to be clamped, we're just going to use a clamp right here on the edge of the bench. And we'll see how it goes. Alright, so uh, as you can see, it worked just fine. It actually doesn't take that much time, but um, accuracy is going to be really hard to obtain with these. You can do it. It's going to be more time consuming to try to be really accurate, especially cutting tubing. Um, cutting discs like that are great for cutting corners out of plate steel and stuff, but for tubing, not the most accurate, so we obviously would have to come back and uh, grind that square if we needed to. But 
It's definitely the most inexpensive way to do it.